Okay, I'm going to show some tips and tricks on how you can improve the editing performance of Vegas Pro while you're using an older computer and maybe more modern file formats such as H.265 and 4K footage. So right now I just opened up this project and you can see there's a lot of um, thumbnails being generated here by Vegas and Vegas is having to decode these files and it actually takes quite a bit of time for it to decode the H.265 files on this older computer and it's using a hundred percent or nearly a hundred percent CPU uh, cycles to do that so every time you open up your project you actually have to let Vegas build these thumbnails and that means your editing performance is going to be slow for a while until it builds them all well let's go ahead and change that let's go to options preferences video tab thumbnails to show in video events change that to none and click OK now uh, Vegas has still got a queue to build some of these thumbnails in, so let's go ahead and restart. The, uh, let's go and uh, just close our project, uh, reopen it. All right, I've reopened the project, and you can see that uh, there is no or minimal CPU utilization, and Vegas is not attempting to build these thumbnails. Now, if you've been editing a project for a while, you'll know what clips are what, but if you don't, you can just always uh, position the playback head over one of these clips and then you'll know what clip is what. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the video preview, video proxies, and the project media tab. So I'm going to open up the project media tab and you can see that you're seeing a list here. If you go up to the top, you'll see list, details, and thumbnail. Uh, I recommend not choosing thumbnail because it will try to build thumbnails for each of the pieces of media that you have in your project so and that will slow down your computer significantly especially if they're H.265 files and you're using an older computer so I recommend just keeping it on list or details so let's go to a pretty demanding file to decode for the computer this is a clip here it's a H.265 clip I'm gonna get rid of the task manager for now so let's go to the trimmer, it's fine. And let's go ahead and just, actually I'm going to bring up the task manager again by pressing Control shift escape and let's go ahead and drag this around, the playback head. You can see that there's a lot of lag and you can't, you could not really edit uh, very well. You, can, you definitely can't edit in real time to this. So what if I change the video quality from best full all the way down to draft? quarter. I mean, shouldn't that help? Well, no. It's going to basically be the same performance, and the reason why is because that draft quarter is useful for rasterizing effects and transitions at a lower spatial resolution. It's not useful for this particular situation because Vegas still has to decode the source H.265 file before it displays it in this uh, video preview frame buffer window here, so it still needs to look at the original H.265 file before it downscales it. So it's kind of pointless. So let's go back to best full. Let's look at a video proxy. So to create a video proxy, you make a selection of clips. We'll go and make a selection of the timeline. You could just select one or hold down the control button, select a few, or press the D button twice and select a selection rectangle over some clips. And then press uh, control D in order to go back to the normal edit tool. And then right click and choose select in project media list. But I'm just gonna go and just select this particular clip. So right click, select in project media list, there it is. And we're going to right click and choose create video proxy. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a lower scale resolution version of, it's going to basically transcode or re-render a lower quality version of the file that's a bit more edit friendly, decode friendly for Vegas. And depending on how fast your computer is, it shouldn't take too long for this to, uh, this transcoding process to happen. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click and rename, or go to rename, and I'm going to copy that name, go to explore containing folder, paste that name in there, and you can see we've got the original uh, clip here, it's 315 megabytes, if I go to open and media info, it's H.265, you can see, it's 100 megabits a second, and it's UHD 4K. Okay, so that proxy there is basically done now. Now look at this one, the original was 315 megabytes, the proxy is about 60 megabytes, so significantly smaller, and it has a unique extension of SFVP0, so 
uh, you can easily search for your proxies and isolate them by searching for that file extension. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And you can see that in order to actually see the proxy, right now if I move around in best, it's not gonna it's still gonna be the same lag. If I go to good, it would be the same thing. In order to see your proxy, you gotta go to draft or preview. So let's go to preview full. That would be the best. And you can see now as I scrub through we are seeing a, a, a much more better improved performance. Uh, the resolution of the proxy is probably 720p or so, but it's absolutely acceptable if you, especially if you're just trying to get your envelopes timed right, things like that. This would be very useful. Now, if you want to get a bit more performance, let's get rid of the task manager for a second. You see, there's some text here being basically composited on top of the video layer. If you want to make it even more smooth, you can press the X button to isolate the track that it was already selected, the clip was selected, so now we press X to solo the track. You can also simply press this little S button to solo the track. You can also uh, press Control to select a group of tracks and press X to solo them all. Press X again to toggle that soloing off. And there's also a mute button as well. The hotkey for mute is Z and the hotkey for soloing is X. And remember the track must be focused. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, let's talk about the event pan crop window. So I have my proxy here, and I'm loading up my event pan crop, and it's a little bit of a slowdown there. So because I have my proxies, I should be able to my proxy being viewed. I should be able to scrub through this with no problem, right? So as you can see, there's some lag going on. It's not the video preview window, it's the cropping. If I go to Tremor or something else, get rid of the event pan crop, I can scrub around no problem. The reason for this is because the event pan crop window is not using the proxy, it's decoding the original H.265 file. You can see the detail in there. So, there's a few ways around this. Uh, but initially, you're just going to have to uh, do your keyframes and just uh, deal with the lag. Now the good news is once you've created your keyframes and let's say that you want to just get a real-time playback of your footage you can just get out of the event pan crop window. I like to switch to trimmer uh, but as long as you're just not uh, having that displayed, it, it can't be displayed then or it can't be the active tab, you can see that you've got that real-time performance but what if you also want to change your timing of your keyframes let's say you're happy with your keyframes but you're not happy with the timing well you can just disable this sync cursor toggle or uh, touch that button it'll disable the sync cursor so now you can freely move around the time slider or the playhead and this windows not updating and then you can change the timing of your keyframes, the keyframes you're already happy with, but you just want to change the timing. So let's say that's going to zoom out much faster, but then let's say you want it to take much longer to zoom out. Now as I move the playhead, you can see that uh, this is useful. And then when you're done, you can uh, re-enable the sync cursor uh, with the frame on this line here. So that's really, or the frame in the down here. Okay, so let's go through a few more preferences real quick options preferences you should if you're using multiple instances of Vegas you're dragging and dropping clips between different basically instances of the program and you notice every time you get into your main project it lags a lot before it lets you do anything that's because of this option this option is usually enabled closed media files will not the active application so if your computer has a decent amount of uh, RAM I recommend that you disable this option and then you'll be able to seamlessly go between instances of Vegas and you won't experience any slowdown while it tries to reload the media files. Also, your RAM preview. This computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I think the default for this is like 1024 megabytes. But depending on how much memory you have in your computer or RAM, uh, I recommend upping this up to maybe about one fourth the computer's uh, total memory. So for me, it'll be about 8192. But if you had like maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM, 4096 might be appropriate. If you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, maybe 2048 megabytes would be appropriate. You get the idea. So 8192 for me. And of course, if you have a dedicated graphics card on your computer, make sure you use that. And of course, some of these settings require you to restart Vegas Pro before they take effect.
And finally, let's imagine you are color grading. Let's go and enable our little color effects here. It's actually pretty simple, but you can see that I'm going to go into 32 bit. Let's say I like to color grade with video levels 32 bit so I can avoid a bit of that color banding, some of those color banding artifacts. It actually does help even though this source video is 8 bit. Let's say I'm in best. So I'm scrubbing around here and I and I like my colors. I'm maybe going over here and changing the contrast a little bit, things like that. And it's not real time performance, but it doesn't have to be. So I'm I'm basically making sure everything's good the way I like it. It's a little bit of lag, but it's acceptable. You can always go to best half. That'll be a little bit faster actually. And then let's say I like this, but I want to just check my timing one more time. Well, another option I want to recommend is let's say we go to preview and we try to drag around. It's lagging quite a bit, isn't it? That's because the effects are being processed. Well, we can go here and let's go to select all and make sure once you've selected all, you don't have to do it again. Just disable effects and then with effects. So if you disable the effects, now we can scrub around. But it's still slowing down, and that's because in the video settings we're using 8-bit video okay that's much faster but it's still dropping a frame here and there and that's because of the text being composited onto the event here so I'm gonna go ahead and press the X button and now we're soloed and this is about as fast as it can be so let's imagine that you wanna go back to color grain just disable this go to best full go here go to your 32-bit and now you can go maybe to this frame again that you like and you are back or maybe go to best half because it doesn't really need to be that detailed and then let's say okay I'm happy with this but I want to go check my timing one more time just disable your effects go to preview full change this to something like 8 bit for maximum speed and now we are back to dragging around you can also of course solo the track if you really want especially if you have a lot of tracks going on so you can check your timing here like this and then go back into your color grading mode by disabling this, going to best maybe half, changing this if you prefer, if you're into that. And then with minimal time you can get back into color grading. So this is the best way overall to use Vegas on a slower computer and I hope this helped out.